Now, we have, um, we've given you your t-shirt, and by signing up to Love Running, you have got the right to wear a Love Running t-shirt. And we expect to see you all over Bristol, across the Downs, by the docks, wherever you may be, north, south, wearing your Love Running t-shirt as you run around, as you train, and as you practice your seat bone. And that is a great thing. But this little um, session now, I want to tell you how you can earn your t-shirt. Because we're allowing you to wear it, <coughs> but we want you to actually earn it by putting love into action, by raising money. As I said before, it's not really simply about the running. The running is important, and the, the running is fun, but it's even more about the love. And we are looking to raise money. And as I confessed to you earlier, the targets that we have given you are actually challenging. This is way, way, way above what is normally expected of ordinary people. But you're here on Love Running because you are more than ordinary people. You are extraordinary people. Turn to the person next to you and say, I'm extraordinary. <laughs> and I want to um, tell you just a few tips on how you can actually see this extraordinary thing happen in practice. And I want you to hear this one absolute key principle, and that is this. People want to give. People want to give. If you can get a hold of that one truth, that one fact, it will change and color the way that you do your fundraising. You need to understand that everyone wants to give. No one is content to live in a world where there is such blatant injustice, such poverty, such disease, such um, destruction, devastation all around the world. No one is comfortable with that. We all want to do something about it. We actually want to give. Your job is to help people do the thing that they really want to do. I don't have qualms of asking my friends, my family, my neighbours, my colleagues to give to Love Running because I know that they want to. Everyone wants to give. I'm just helping them do the thing they really want to do. Now, we're going to interview uh, Dave Long, who was the number one fundraiser from 2010. So would you welcome to the stage Mr. David Long. How are you doing, Dave? Good, thanks. Tell me about your t-shirt. So this t-shirt is custom made, so I wear it whenever I'm training, and uh, so far I've had no one that's uh, scanned me, but there's still hope. So you're supposed to be scanned like a barcode. So yeah, there's a QR code, and there's also the uh, just giving text bit on the back, so um, hopefully there's still some miles to run, so I'm hopeful. Okay. Now, this is your just giving page. And I can see there that your target for this year is 2012. Now, that is a huge target. Could you tell me what your target was initially when you did this in 2010 and what your experience was? So, my original target was £300, and I actually raised £1,664 and a penny. <laughs> Amazing. So... When you set yourself the target of 300, did you think that was a hard thing or doable? I honestly didn't think I'd get more than 50 quid. Right. And that was based on five people. Okay, so you went in with low expectation. Why did, you, um, why did you just not quit at 300? Why did you keep going? So I think many people, as you said, are very keen to give. So I basically got my address book and thought, I know most of these people, and basically... <laughs> emailed every single person in my address book but the important thing is to make it personal i think if you send that a generic email saying hi can you give me some money they'll probably say no but if you say hi dave i'm doing this for this this and this and it makes it a bit more personal so it's all about being personal and then obviously uh, follow it up later a couple of months later saying i've run 100 miles um and also include the causes so as just well. say that 100 mile thing again <laughs> That's a heck of a run. I think, I think if you're training, uh, if you um, calculate all your training runs through Run Keep or however you do it, and just say, look, I've run 100 miles for the poor, the needy, and the oppressed, then that basically means that you're making a, a massive um, challenge to yourself. So you, um, were you a, a runner before you did this? Absolutely not. <laughs> and do you think that people responded to the fact that you're a non-runner running? I think that kind of... 
you kind of make a connection with people because not everyone is a runner. And you, if you go out to people and say, I can't run a mile, uh, and they kind of recognize that is you're really making a commitment and that you you're actually have a challenge because, I mean, I'm not a normal person that would go out and run six miles because it is quite painful, to be honest. <laughs> Shh. Once, you, once you've rehearsed a few times, it gets easier, but the first time you run your mile, it is a challenge. But the more and more you do it, it becomes easier and easier. Okay, so you set yourself 300 pounds in 2010, you set yourself 2012. What do you think are your chances and what's your strategy? So, I mean, my strategy again is email everyone in your address book, keep it personal, use Twitter, use Facebook, uh, and LinkedIn if you're on LinkedIn. Uh, and basically, if you're doing RunKeeper, include the, the link to your Just Giving page. Um, and just ask everyone. It's great to email people, but I think it's very important to follow that up with a conversation uh, and be personal with them, because some people don't like to just have a, a message saying, give me money. If you go out and say, have you got my email, follow up that way. That makes sense. Fantastic. Round of applause to Dave Long. <laughs> Dave will be available at the end if you want to scan him. <laughs> That's, uh, we'll tell you about how the, the text giving works, but let me just give you some principles on how to help people give. If we can put these um, up on the screen. First thing that you need to do is you need to actually help people connect with you. So the thing about Dave is that he, uh, like most of us, is not a natural runner. He's not been known for running. And the biggest asset that you have is yourself. To be able to say, this is my story. You can also use the story of love running as a whole. But to say, this is who I am. This is what it means to me. The most effective people who use their Just Giving page, for example, write stories. They tell things very personally. They, they, they do a blog or they send out... Uh, emails that give you an idea of how they're going on saying actually I'm terrified about this I've never done this before will you help me will you help me do something which is an amazing thing for me it's a massive challenge help people connect with you be personal be vulnerable be open secondly help them connect with the causes now on the website you'll find an update of all the, the causes that we're supporting. Not only that, but we produce these videos. So you've already seen one. We've got a video for the project in Uganda with Tear Fund. And we're going to create a video with Click and uh, some of the other needy Bristol charities. And actually being able to share these videos is really important. But telling the story in your own words. Someone I was speaking to last night, just over a, a meal, uh, said, I don't want kids in Africa to die because they have no clean water on my watch. And actually, having that personal connection with the things that we're raising money for is really, really important. Thirdly, help them with humor. In other words, keep it light, keep it entertaining. And actually, being able to do something like, listen, if you support me up to 500 pounds, for example, I will do it in a tutu or I will do it naked uh, with a strategically placed running number. Uh, however, you, you know, use humor, uh, write in a way that doesn't make it heavy and hot and pressurizing, but actually find the humor. If you can't find the humor in running, really you're not trying hard enough because we're all looking ridiculous and we're all dealing with things. Uh, you know, say, look, help me, I, I've got 10 pounds towards my sports bra and I'm a man. Uh, wh whatever the humor is that you need, keep it light and keep it engaging for people. There's a couple here who actually helped give out your pack and your t-shirt. In fact, can we give a round of applause for all the volunteers? But the, a couple here, and everyone who's volunteered is also running, uh, they're getting married the week before love running. And rather than going on a two-week honeymoon, they're going on a one-week honeymoon so that they can do love running. And he is going to run in her wedding dress. She's going to run in his morning suit. So, <laughs> But let's be inventive, let's be creative, let's be fun. Next, help them with creativity. 
That's basically the same sort of thing. So think of ways. Don't just go, what I will do is I will email you different templates and thoughts and you can try this and how about uh, putting this on your page. But actually don't just use what we give you. Be creative. Come up with your own things. Think of different ways in which people can uh, respond to the challenge. Uh, I don't know, if, Janet, are you still here? Yeah, she's still here at the back. Uh, Janet in 2009 said to her supporters, I will, if you support me to 500 pounds, I will match that 500 pounds. And uh, her supporters gave her 1,000 pounds. And she had to match it with 1,000 pounds and then she just shut down her Just Giving page and emigrated. But um, <laughs> be creative in how you can get people on board. Next, help people with updates. Tell people how you're doing. I love that 100 miles idea. I've never thought of that before. But actually being able to update your Just Giving page, update your emails. I've done this. My target is now that. I'm a third of the way through. That brings people on the journey with you. And then finally, help them with persistence. People want to give, but very often you need to ask them a few times. The first time, they will not give. It's not because they don't want to give. It's because they're too busy. They're looking at the squirrel in their front yard. And what you have to do is not take the final answer. You have to understand that they want to give. They really, really do want to give. It's just that they had a whole bunch of other emails and then it was a birthday party and then there was some work stuff and they didn't quite get around to it. The second time they were just about to do it, but uh, you know, it's not quite the best time in terms of the bills. So the third email that they get, yes, yes, I'm doing it, but actually being persistent. Do you know what? This is painful. This is so painful. This is so awkward. Because most of us don't like asking people for money. Put your hand up if you like asking people for money. Okay, most of us apart from these guys. <laughs> but the rest of us. But this is where you come down to love. I'm not doing it for me. Love running gets not one jot of the money that we raise. It all goes to the people that we're supporting. So this is not for us. This is for the sake of people that are poor, oppressed and needy. People that are dying. And if you see someone knocked down in the street, uh, you get on your phone and you ring up the ambulance. And if you can't get through, you keep holding. And if the call drops, you ring again. You don't just say, oh, well, never mind. You do it. You persist. You won't give up until you get the help that that person needs. Because you love the person and you want to see them helped.